Ka'ili Chan is a Kanaka Maoli artist based in Hawaii whose works address ideas of containment and exposure, agency and restraint. Process and materials transform physical spaces into unique environments, commenting on contemporary issues in her work. She often constructs narratives through symbols and objects that address the impact of historical events on the present day. Aloha mai kako. My name is Jamie Ferris and I'm the curator of Inundation. And this morning I wanted to take you on a short virtual studio visit to Ke'ili Chan studio in Kalihi Valley. So good morning, Ke'ili. Aloha. Good morning, Jamie. So good to see you. I see that you're in your studio. So can you just take a quick minute to introduce yourself and where you are and, and what you do? Sure. Well, thank you so much, Jamie, for having me in this exhibition. Um, it's always an honor to work with you. Uh, you're such a visionary for, for art, uh, contemporary art, and uh, relating um, you know, uh, our work, many of the artists that you work with, uh, you know, are um, so inspiring and motivating for, for, for myself. And um, your, your understanding of the world is um, just, uh, it, it's an incredible visionary experience for me. So I appreciate working with you. So that's number one. Second, secondly, um, what, what I do, I, I make art that uh, it responds to my experience of the world. Um, so wherever you know, I happen to be, um, uh, it, it's, it's my experience that informs the art and the form that it takes. Uh, but most of my uh, work definitely is focused on uh, the experience of Hawaii and from a, a Native Hawaiian experience, um, or excuse me, it's from a Native Hawaiian perspective on the world. And uh, since I live here in Hawaii, uh, it has uh, much to do with uh, what's happening uh, on these islands and um, what our people and peoples of Hawaii are experiencing at this current moment in time. So um, my work takes a variety of different forms, primarily installation and many different materials. I'm, uh, I'm non-media specific. And I, um, I try to address those issues that uh, we encounter uh, right now. So um, that's kind of what I do. Um, and I'm very appreciative of being included in this inundation uh, exhibition. Thank so, you so thank much, you. Ke'ili, so generous as, as <laughs> always. And, and um, to you too, I so appreciate your vision and the work that you've done and that we've collaborated on over the last almost 10 years, mm -hmm. right? I think Veritas, the, the site-specific installation of Veritas at Waimanalo, we did almost nine years ago. Oh. I, that, still remains as you know one of one of the most important works that i've i've done and hopefully in maybe five more years uh we can uh reinstall that i don't know if it would be in the same location or in a different location but the the that particular project still lives on and as i increase the uh, number of cells by one each year so um I look forward to working with you on that as well. So that was an ocean-related piece, and Humai Alamai, the piece that you made for inundation, uh, is, is also related to the coast. Can you explain a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. Um, that particular piece is, is looking at the shoreline areas of Oahu in particular. It, Oahu remains the, the main island that uh, most of the population occurs on. And um, our ports, our, our ports of entry, whether they be the shipping yards or the um, airports um, and relative uh, military bases, play an integral um, strategic role in the existence of Hawaii 
uh, not only in America, but um, in the world, since we're, we're smack dab in the middle of the Pacific. So we are in a, a critical point in the Pico of, of the Pacific Ocean. And um, our, uh, our susceptibility to sea level rise and inundation is, uh, I would say, is, is obvious <laughs> and, and, and quite evident. Uh, but uh, our actions uh, don't necessarily reflect that uh, importance and um, they are, our actions don't always reflect um, the necessary uh, actions that we need to take to address uh, uh, inundation and sea level rise. It's in particular, um, you know, since we, our economy is, is highly tourist based um, and it's not very diversified, uh, we find you know, ourselves in, in the middle of this pandemic uh, in, in, a, in, in a big pickle jar. So uh, this particular work highlights those areas um, that are critical to uh, us. Uh, we, I think, import 90 to 95% of our goods, our consumer goods through uh, shipping. So our ports are very important and as we, can see uh, with the recent uh, explosion in, in Beirut, in Lebanon, uh, the, the importance of ports is critical. Uh, so, you know, if something like that were to occur here in Hawaii, uh, we would be in a very, very bad position. Uh, mm -hmm. And our, our, our peoples uh, would be, um, you know, in dire circumstances. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how do we get back to, to the point of where we can be at least somewhat sustainable is, you know, we, we need to address that now instead of 10 years from now or 20 years from now. We need to start looking at um, how we're going to handle our shorelines. Are we going to retreat? Are we, you know, going to uh, perhaps designate all shoreline areas, uh, you know, as critical uh, environmental um, components that will, com that will complete the ecosystem that could sustain us or, or not. You, you know, what are we doing to, to address that? And I think we, we, have to, we have to at least try things so that people understand uh, how these things can work if retreat is part of the solution. Um, it's either hardscape or softscape. And how do we integrate that into our economy or how do we, we create new fields of the economy so that we can be sustainable? So, um, you know, I have the maps that are a part of, um, a part of the piece as well as uh, a certain uh, types of fish that are um, uh, entering in, into the, the composition. And, and the fish are, are derived from the uh, typical types of fish that would normally uh, be in our fish ponds. And, you know, instead of looking at the value of land in terms of hotels and retail, you know, perhaps we should reevaluate the way we um, categorize growth uh, and, you know, perhaps we can uh, measure our economy using different categories and different narratives. Um, you know, what if we were to bring back all the fish ponds in Waikiki, you know, and set back the hotels uh, inland? And, you know, the, it could be a really wonderful uh, interesting um, development uh, in sustainability and marketing and hoteling, uh, you know, that, that would bring in um, tourists who are, uh, I guess, more aware of their impact and their footprint upon us now. In particular, 
specifically in, in relation to this pandemic. You know? it, it, it's really interesting. I never thought it would happen, but it's happening now. And so when we look back to see what happened to the Native Hawaiian population, uh, when the flu came in, when measles and, 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 and all the venereal diseases came in. Well, you know, this is now 21st century, it's happening again. And it's not just Native Hawaiians, but all of the people of Hawaii who are, uh, you know, susceptible to this. And so, you know, we're not only talking about environment, but we're talking about our own personal responsibility to taking care of each other and, and therefore taking care of, of the land around us. The land is gonna be here longer than we will, obviously. And so we need to do our part, and our, responsi our responsible part in taking care of this land to the best of our ability and not just exploiting it for um, our short-lived grat self-gratification. So in bringing these fish into these, these important port areas, um, uh, I, I am suggesting that we take a look at re, re uh, I'm suggesting that we look at uh, reinvesting uh, some discussion and some action into changing uh, that hardscape that we've created and looking at really looking at solutions that can effectively um, address uh, the you know influx of people but as well as how are we going to sustain those uh, populations so fish is very important fish as a metaphor uh, for human beings fish uh, as as a re literal relation to to our oceans and our resources that play an integral part in in Hawaiian culture, uh, but also in our economy today. Uh, so it, it, it's it's looking at the inundation of of these shorelines and these poor areas um, from like two different perspectives, really. Um, one as being a fish uh, and taking over, and another as uh, being, uh, you know, this influx of, of other coming in to, to, to our islands, essentially. When, when we talked uh, about two months ago when you were making the piece, you mentioned to me uh, your love of fishing and your love of fish. And, yes. uh, and, and I wanted you to talk a little bit about that. What are your memories of fishing? And you, you also mentioned this, um, you know, take a philosophy of fishing that's very important, I think, to everything that you're talking about, which is take enough, only what you need. La, la, yeah. um, so the use of fish comes from two different sources. Um, you know, I'm not, I don't call myself a fisherman. My cousins do that for me. <laughs> But uh, there is an olelo no eau that my, my father um, used in, in a speech in 1996 addressing what is an educated uh, man or woman. And uh, for us, as coming from a Hawaiian perspective, it's, it, it, this particular olelo no eau talks about the fisherman and his knowledge of the, of the sea. Uh, you can either have a short line or a long line. And the long line refers to the deepness of the knowledge and the wisdom that that particular person has, or, you know, as uh, uh, that a people have together. And it's really understanding the interconnectedness of everything. And, and we, we're experiencing that now, right? Uh, through this pandemic, we understand how interconnected everything is. Uh, in this in this world, um, face masks from China, uh, you, you know, you name it, it's all interconnected. It's not just an island-based uh, um, e economy, but it's a world economy now. So, with this particular Olelo, the fisherman knows it, it's a metaphor for knowing how everything is connected. So 
uh, he knows the tides. He knows the lunar cycles that affect the tides. He knows uh, the seasons of the fish, of when the babies are born, what the juvenile stage is, what the mature adult stage is, when they are ready to uh, give birth again. So that whole cycle is an integral part of his knowledge and he acts accordingly. He doesn't eat the babies. He doesn't, he doesn't eat the, uh, uh, the hapai, you know, mama fish uh, before they're ready to, to lay their eggs. Um, but he does it, it, you know, according to the cycle of life and therefore is able to continue that cycle of life throughout generations. And we need to get back to that place in our lives. We need to know where our food comes from and not just go into the supermarket and buy the hamburger or buy the fish or buy the steaks of fish. We should be using the entire fish um, and understanding how to get that fish as well not just to enjoy the primo part of the mahi-mahi. Um, so it, it's, it's about this wealth and depth of knowledge that we need to get back to. And, you know, um, because the, the world has, uh, has really fell in love with eating fish, uh, we also have to know that cycle and we have to know when to catch and when not to catch. So uh, when we see something uh, on, the, on the restaurant um, menu and it's always there 365 days a week, you know already that you're, you're not being sustainable. And you know, just like having strawberries 365 days a week, they're seasonal and we should be eating that way and recognizing our part upon this land and, and upon this, this earth so that we can, um, you know, act more responsibly, uh, you know, with, with the creatures and the beings that, that give us life so that, you know, it can be a more balanced approach. Thank you so much, Kate Lee. That's so, the, that wisdom is so essential, right? That we, if we follow the cycles and we take enough, there's plenty. There's always plenty more. Right, yeah. We just have to eliminate our, our, de our greedy desires mm -hmm. to have this now and to have whatever we want. You know, it's not about what we want, it's what we need, really, and, and being satisfied with that. Yeah. And, and I find that, I think America, Americans are per perhaps the worst ab about that, you, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, so Ke'ili, can you tell us a little bit about the title of the piece for Inundation? Yeah, uh, Who My Olamai Reconnects the Past and Potential Future Waters of not only, you know, in, in this case, uh, Waikiki and the ports, um, but it, it's being aware and becoming aware of the rising and surging waters of life um, that, that uh, we are experiencing right now. And, you know, it's not just the literal rising of the waters, um, but it's the rising of everything that the, the social unrest that's going on, uh, the, um, the pandemic that we're experiencing. So, you know, our, the, the very fabric of our lives are being challenged. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I know that more people will unfortunately uh, be impacted negatively, you know, on, on all sides, uh, economically, health-wise. Uh, and we need to work together, everyone, not just uh, Hawaiians together, but Hawaii people together need to work uh, in unison uh, to address these critical aspects of life 
that everyone is being impacted by. I, 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 I cannot think of one person who is not impacted by it. So who am I, all of my, come, let's come together. Let's join together. Um, it's, it's, it's a, brings to mind another Olelo no Eal, Eala, Ealu, Equi Lima. It's, it's up, uh, together, join hands. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's, we need to work together to do this. And we, we need to be respectful of each other and we need to be responsible for our own actions and how, how we will impact other people. And so, um, you know, in, in relation to this particular art piece, uh, I would say it's also a call. It's a call to the fish out in the ocean uh, and, you know, to come in and, and help us understand what we're doing wrong and uh, to, to, to write it and, and to correct that approach uh, to this world. And, and it's, it's, you know, I also think of us as part of that, you know, uh, that call. Uh, so it's not only about protecting the mountain, but it's also about protecting the sea. And it's reconnecting them all together, you know, as, as in a more balanced system that we used to have, um, but we no longer practice. And so that, I would say, that's the you know uh, my my intent for um, who my all of my. This brings so much together the the Olelo and your thinking about your place the your location um, on that shoreline and balancing the mountain and uh, and the ocean together. And I know you've been working on series that are related. So you're in your studio right now. So. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, could you take us uh, around a little bit and show us the piece that you're working on right now? Okay, so this is my studio. Uh, some of the equipment that I work with, welders, bandsaw, table saw. Um, this is an umeke that I am patching. Uh, my mentor, Mr. Bowman, whose house this used to be, uh, is, I'm working with, uh, I'm, he taught me how to patch Umeke, so I'm working on that. And that's just like the little side project. But what I really wanted to show you is this right there. You see those fish? Yeah. Those are plaster fish, and those are prototypes for, um, a large installation that uh, is going up now. Actually, it's almost complete, but it's uh, on the facade of the Hawaii State Hospital in Kaneohe. So it's a it's a new um, new building, and uh, this fish it refers to um, the Olelo Noeau Pala Kahala Momona Kauhu. So the Hawaii State Hospital is located in the mountains of uh, Kea Ahala and Kapuna Hala. Uh, and so it, it, it was a, an area that was, uh, had tons of hala. And of course, that's a, a critical uh, resource for, for Hawaiians. But it talks about the relationship of um, the mountains to the sea. So when the hala is ripe, it's ready you're, you can go and harvest the uhu because they're fat. There's also another uh, olelo, polakahala mamona kavana. So in the vana or the sea urchin, or I, I think people would understand it as uni, uh, Japanese, uh, when, when the hala is ripe, the vana is ready to harvest because it's fat. So um, this piece is all about, you know, reconnecting the mountains to the ocean, um, at least conceptually. And uh, I, I'll send you some, some pictures of the installation. It's almost finished. So, um, yeah, so that's, this is the studio. I do primarily all my model work here. So there is the model for the Hulali Kala. Um, which is the installation at the Prince Waikiki. And um, 
And that's about it. Thank you so much, Ke'ili. That was, <laughs> you're doing so much within just that little space. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and, and it's so important that you're doing this piece for the health center. I think that really brings everything back full circle. I think it really kind of ties everything together for the purpose of the hospital and also, um, you know, the, the connecting, reconnecting. I mean, you can see Kaneohe Bay from the hospital. I mean, it's, it's amazing view and at least visually it's connected. And so um, to have this piece and, and another exterior design that I did uh, is, I think, really important for contextualizing that particular um, building and its function and, and for the patients and the staff that will be occupying that. that. Ke'ili, you are such an important resource and knowledge bearer for this community. So mahalo nui for your time today and sharing your studio process with us. Thank you so much, Jamie. It's such a Again, an, an honor to work with you, and I really am blessed, um, you know, to 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 do the work that I do, and and to work with people, you know, like you. <laughs>